Okay, so I will get us started here. Well, welcome and thanks for joining us for our Ask Me Anything Parks and Tracks webinar. I will be passing it off to Fran and Jake to talk all things Parks and Tracks and answer your questions. So feel free to use the chat feature if you have any questions throughout the session. We'd love to answer those. Um, and if you prefer to use the Q&A, feel free to use that as well. We'll be monitoring both of those. And just to let everybody know, you will get a follow-up email with the link to today's recording and a certificate of attendance. Um, so you'll watch for that a few days after today. With that, I'll pass it over to Fran. Hello, I'm Fran. Uh, just like it says on the little thing at the bottom of the Zoom thing. Um, so I'm here for you to ask me anything about carts and tracks. Um, I've got a whole bunch of stuff here. Ta-da, uh, I'm ready to answer your questions. Um, I can uh, make noise with it. I can show you all kinds of things with it. Uh, and Jake, go ahead and introduce yourself, Jake. So hi, I'm Jake Hopkins. I'm one of the other physics folks here and uh, I'll be uh, responding to everything on chat and uh, queuing up questions to Fran because uh, she tells me she won't be able to read the chat from across the room. She's in the room with the fancy cameras and I'm just in an empty office. So uh, fire away with any questions. If you wanna start with chat, that's great. If you wanna uh, unmute yourself and ask questions uh, the old fashioned way, uh, that works too. So fire away. Uh, and if you don't have any questions to start off with, I made a whole list of uh, possible questions so that I could uh, come up with things to talk about. Uh, so, for example, uh, one question that actually I got this morning uh, from a customer was, how much mass is safe to add to the newer plastic dynamics carts? As in, how much mass will not damage the bearings or the cart or the track or anything? Uh, so, let me just uh, switch cameras here. Um, there, and got a couple of plastic carts here. Uh, this is a, a sensor cart over here, and then this is a regular cart here, and both of them have wheels that have a spring under them. So if you if you push down on the wheels, the spring actually retracts, and so you can actually, you know, if, if you put too much force on it, the whole thing pushes down and touches the table. And the same thing with these, only they don't you know have to go quite quite. They don't have to go quite as far because of this sort of curved area on the wheel. Uh, but it, as long as you're not putting so much mass that the wheels retract in and it doesn't roll, you're good. Uh, so that's that question. So the retractable wheel thing, that was a, that's a good safety feature. Uh, had that one on, I think, every model we ever had. But oh, the yeah. idea there is that if it's on the ground and somebody steps on it, it won't act like one roller skate. <laughs> right, so same thing on, on these green ones. Um, and also, if for some reason the axles or the wheels on the green ones or the plastic ones get messed up, these are super easy to replace on your own. Uh, so that is like, you know, a real advantage on these. I would say that probably the only bad thing about these sensor carts is if you do uh, damage a wheel or an axle, uh, it's not user repairable. But everything else about the sensor cart, in my opinion, is pretty awesome. All so, right, uh, so your question. What's the question, Jake? So, um, well, I was going to ask one first, actually, uh, oh. since, since I have the list. So you mentioned uh, the green cart and the sensor cart. Do you want to talk about just as so far as defining which which of the carts you have a whole array of carts in front of you? If you want to just talk briefly about when you talk about which one, because you said one of them was the regular one. Oh, all right. Regular. But the regular one is the one that I have because it's regular <laughs> to me. All right. So. Here, there uh, we go. This is what I think of as the regular cart. It's a plastic cart. It's this dark um, blue or green or teal color. Um, 
and it's got uh, well it doesn't usually use a piece of tape on it that gives the mass on it uh, it has these wheels that you can see uh, it may or may not have a plunger if it's got a plunger it's going to be gray and it's have a whole bunch of things in it that i stuck in there uh, it's going to be gray and it's got a plunger on the end of it uh, which goes in by uh, pushing in on that little thing and comes out well, it's one of the ways it comes out um, so these are the regular plastic carts. They don't have anything uh, special about them other than they are so-called low friction, um, which, you know, they've got pretty good bearings and so they're pretty low friction. And then you can attach lots of things to the top of them. And then before we made those, we made, hello? Where's my bingo? All of a sudden I lost my view of everything. I don't know what you're looking at. Uh, we're looking at the cart in your hand. All right, right great. I, yeah, Zoom just disappeared. It's back now. Um, so this is a green metal cart. Uh, it says vernier on the side and it's made of extruded aluminum. Uh, it's pretty, pretty massive compared to the other carts. We made these before we made the plastic carts. These also have a um, plunger in the middle. There we go. That one seems a little bit sticky. Um, so a plunger. Uh, They've got those the same wheels and they've got these black plastic ends with these um, sort of teardrop shaped bits as opposed to the plastic ones, which have these tab things that you can take in and out. And then our final iteration of carts are the GoDirect sensor carts, um, which have the fifth wheel for determining position. They all have the inbuilt plunger. Um, they've got a force sensor that you know you can attach a hook over here to the end. They've got a three axis accelerometer that's kind of right down here and in from the side here. You do have to charge them. Uh, they can connect by Bluetooth and they come in two colors. Um, I read an article about this recently. We call this one yellow. And right now in the zoom frame, because of the lighting in here and the, you know, like, first of all, the colors in this are really weird because I call the color here gray. It's not brown or red. That's just, it looks really weird here. But this is, it's actually chartreuse. And some people think of it as green, uh, but we call it yellow. So I apologize. Uh, and this one, we like to think of this as teal. Uh, we call it green, but a lot of people think of it as blue. So you might think of these as the blue cart and the green cart, but I think of it as the yellow cart and the other green cart. So those are our carts. And then I also brought in a fan cart. Uh, so this is a cart, it's got a fan attached. Um, and this one happens to have the encoder system on it. So it's got some electronics in the bottom of it, but they come both with and without that. All right. So. so so thank you. Uh, so we, we do have uh, another question there. So uh, can you take us through the basics of setting up the tracks with photo gates? Yes. Uh, so you're going to need these things. Uh, I have two of them. I do have two of them. Um, and let me just put this under here real quick. Uh, so there's one that has a photo gate attached to it already. Yours probably does not have a piece of yellow tape on it. That's to mark it as belonging to the physics group. Um, and it's this plastic thing. It might have, this one has the kind of oblong uh, nut on it. This one has a square nut. We used to use square nuts with everything. Turns out that those are a little bit annoying and we found that the oblong ones are less annoying. So we switched to them. Um, you, can, you can get both. I have, I have some of each here. So let me go back to the full size view here. The idea is you hook the photo gate on with a little screw, and this screw should come with the photo gate bracket in its baggie. I don't know why there's an extra one here. I'll take that one off. So you wind up with this thing. And then what you do with this thing is you're going to slide it in. And this is actually going to I did this the wrong way. Each of these, each of these has, I'm going to show you this. It's really cool, actually. Um, either 
you can set it up at an angle. And this is actually the side is the angle side actually marked 45 degrees, but you can't read that. And you can see there's like these two little bumps on it here. And those slide into the groove on the side of the track. On the other side, it says 90 degrees. Um, boy, is that hard to see. Um, you can just barely see that it says 90 degrees in here. Uh, it's got a little 90 degree angle. And it has its two little nubs here and here. And so that tells you how you're gonna put it in. Um, so with this one, if I want this to be a 90 degree straight up and down angle, I wanna make sure that this side is gonna be the side that's got the nut in it to slide into the side of the track. So I'm gonna put the nut in on that side. So, Get out of the way. You would slide the nut in the groove of the slots on the side of the track. And it won't go very far for me because I've got the uh, um, the foot here. I can take the foot off. But once it, you've got it where you want it, you just twist that to make it tight, and then you can put the foot gate on. Using the screw that comes with it and this little hole in the side of the photo gate. All of these are a quarter 20 uh, size screw hole or screw. So, the quarter 20, it's the exact same as you'd find on a tripod for a camera. Basically, almost all this stuff is all based on the quarter 20 uh, measurement. So, you can just screw this in. And then, depending on how high up or down uh, you want this to pass through, you can move this up and down. Uh, so for example, if you were doing a cart with a picket fence, you might have the flag side of the picket fence up, and then you'd wanna make sure that this was at, a, at the right height to catch the flag of the picket fence. Or if you had, or pick a fence side up. Assuming you can actually get any little slots. There we are. Uh, then you want to make sure that it was the same that the little hole for the photo detector is going to be at the right height for that picket fence. Uh, what more can I help you with this? Because there's other ways to set this up. For example, if you wanted to use the 45 degree angle side, you could have it set with the 45 degree angle, I guess it's gonna go this way, um, set it with the 45 degree angle side. And then you can have the photo gate. If you have, for example, um, a, a pulley from some other company that wasn't us and the pulley just stuck to the end of the track or was even like stuck to the side of the table and standing here and you wanted to put a photo gate on it. Our photo gates uh, work very nicely with our pulleys using the pulley bracket. But if you didn't have that, you could set up the photo gate here to go over wherever your pulley wound up being um, using that 45 degree angle side. Uh, so please, if you've got more questions about that, do put them in the chat and Jake will tell me. What else, Jake? Let's see. When we connected the motion encoder receiver to the LabQuest today, it auto ID'd as a linear position sensor. I had to manually change it to motion encoder cart in the sensor settings. Is there a way to make it auto ID correctly? Ah, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, that you'll have to send in for repair. So that turns out to be a problem with the wire crimping and it's our fault uh, it's manufacturing defect in it uh, so what happens is it auto ids as the related uh, sensor which is linear position sensor uh, and it doesn't give you the correct results so yeah that's happening give us a call send us an email support at vermeer.com or physics at vermeer.com or get on chat uh, on the website 
and we'll do an RMA for you. You can send it back to us. We'll fix it and send it back to you. Thanks for the question. It's a good one. What else, Jake? Let's see. I'm going to look at one of the ones that came in when people registered. There were a couple in there. And one of them was, all my equipment was purchased in 2010. I'm looking to upgrade. We have original lab quests and several sensors and probes. All right. So if you're going to do that, first you want to think about, um, do you want to stick with using LabQuest? Uh, do your students have Chromebooks or tablets or computers? Um, in general, we could we recommend uh, our graphical analysis software currently. Um, so that can be used on Windows, Mac, Chromebook, uh, iPads, Android, tablets, whatever. Uh, and then I would also recommend upgrading to go direct sensors. Um, there, they seem to be the current technology. Um, so here we have, for example, one of our older wired motion detectors, a great motion detector, still works fantastic. But if you're planning to upgrade, think about getting the go direct version. Um, and also think about getting things like the GoDirect sensor carts. You can get a set of the GoDirect sensor carts with the track and it comes with a whole bunch of accessories uh, and you can do a whole bunch of experiments with it. So I really like that. If you're trying to save money, um, you can actually still use those lab quests with graphical analysis and you can plug these in uh, to those lab quests and plug the lab quests into the computers or Chromebooks using a USB cable. Uh, and then it works just like a regular interface and lets you connect all your stuff to using graphical analysis. If you have the money to upgrade though, I would go for the GoDirect. Also, since the uh, GoDirect sensor parts have the force sensor as well as detecting their own position, uh, you get a lot more bang for your buck because you could get these sets and then you know, a lot of people, they get lots of force sensors. Well, when do, you, when do you use the force sensors? You use them for Newton's third law. So you can you know, put two hooks on these and a rubber band in between and do Newton's third law here on the track. Uh, you can you know, do impulse and momentum super easily uh, by putting the uh, hoops into the force sensor of the sensor cart. I love the hoops. Um, these hoops are not that expensive. They can be ordered separately. The order code is it's either hoops-blk or blk-hoops. Maybe Jake can put that in the chat, but whichever is the correct one. Uh, and then these are really nice for doing collisions, for doing impulse and momentum. Um, you can even do impulse and momentum by pulling on it or pushing on it. Uh, so that's actually kind of neat as well. I love the hoops. Other questions? Let's see. It's hoops dash B. Okay. I'm sending that okay. out in chat right Great. now. Thanks, Jake. Um, and uh, power user tip www.vernier.com slash whatever the order code is will take you directly to the web page for that product. So I put that in there as well. So I don't know if the chat from everybody else's side will show it to you, but it should be a clickable link where it'll just take you straight to it. And those, uh, you know, getting two of those hoops, I think it's like, it's like 15 bucks or something. It's not very expensive. Um, is a really nice way to get good collision data. So there's another question about photo gates. Back to photo gates. Can you show us how to collect data? Daisy chain the gates or? All right, question so mark. I hadn't really planned on showing data collection here, so I did not actually bring an interface to plug in the photo gate to. Um, but basically what you wanna do when you're collecting data, I, I find it easier just not to daisy chain them. I just find it easier just to collect connect them both to the interface directly because your interface has two digital ports, uh, which is what these go into. Uh, and then the important thing is there's a whole bunch of different modes. And 
but photogates are probably like the simultaneously simplest and most complex of our sensors. Simplest because they simply measure off and on, right? Blocked or unblocked. Uh, but most complex because you can use them to do so many different things. We have a bunch of tech articles about using photogates that depend on A, which software you're using, and B, which photogates you're using, because not only do we have these photogates, but we also have go direct photogates. And you could be using these with Logger Pro, with LabQuest, or with graphical analysis. Uh, so as a result, it's complicated. Um, so Jake can, maybe you can find some of those articles uh, and put them in the, in the chat. There's basically each article at the top of it says, this article is specifically for this software and this photo gate. If you're using this other photo gate, go here. If you're using this other software, go here. Like, because it, it's, it's complicated. <laughs> Are there other questions? Yeah, the, the great thing about photogates is that you can configure them to do just about anything. The terrible thing about photogates is that you can configure them to do just about anything. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot that comes with it there. So I'm actually going to post, uh, it'll have two links. So depending on which model photogate you have, uh, there's two good articles right there that are sort of the main header that'll take you to all sorts of Q&A about photogates. The one that I recommend to a lot of people is there's a there's a primer at the beginning of both of those uh, that's kind of a guide to all things photogates. Our colleague Josh, another former physics teacher, uh, wrote that and it's a it's a really good place to start with uh, photogate Q&A kind of stuff. So let's see. New one in chat, can you outline the differences and advantages between Graphical Analysis Pro versus the free version so I can pitch my district? They really, really, really like free better. Yes, free is awesome. Um, so with Graphical Analysis Pro in physics, one of the top things that you could use in Graphical Analysis Pro is using custom curve fits and custom calculated columns. So these are really useful for if you want to do anything regarding linearization uh, for doing the custom calculated columns. And it allows you to very easily uh, do things like calculate a potential energy, kinetic energy, uh, total energy, and then graph it all simultaneously. Uh, Another great feature that Graphical Analysis Pro has that Graphical Analysis Free does not uh, is doing a fast Fourier transform. So if you're teaching about sound and waves and you want to teach about beats or if you want to teach about um, having different musical instruments and showing that they sound different because they have different overtones, having that FFT function is extremely helpful. Um, Another thing that you get when you get Graphical Analysis Pro is you get a lot of free experiments. Uh, they will show up in your web account on our website. Uh, and it comes, those free experiments also come with sample data. If you have students who need homeschooling at some point during the year uh, for whatever reason, then you can uh, give them the sample experiments with the data. Uh, oh, wonderful. Um, so sample experiments, and these sample experiments often have linked video. You can't analyze the video, but you can show what the experiment looks like, and you can sync the video to the data collection if you're doing data collection with it. Um, and you can create those sorts of files yourself with that as well. Um, so that's where you get the... Uh, the big main differences uh, between the pro version and the free version. Uh, also, coming out imminently, uh, I have it on good authority from our software group, uh, the newest version of graphical analysis that will be coming out either this week or next week will have the ability to put in error bars. So if you teach IB and error bars are important to you, then you will definitely want the pro version. All right, thanks Jake for showing that. Uh, any more questions? 
because I also have more questions still. All right, so let's see. Someone wrote in here, uh, I need major helper guidance, but that was in a pre-registration, so that one's not quite as actionable as I thought it would be. Um, let's see. My colleague and I are excited to learn more about the track systems. We have a bunch of older sets and are looking to upgrade some things. So I kind of feel like I already answered that with the one Covered that some of it, yeah. back in 2010. Um, so yeah, again, my recommendation is to upgrade to the go direct sensor carts. Um, you can do that without buying all new tracks. So I've got a couple tracks here and I've got all of these carts sitting on them. It's really kind of a mess of stuff. Uh, so we used to sell these tracks, which are exactly the same as these tracks we sell now, except these ones are not coated with black color. And that makes them slightly less, slightly less expensive for us. Um, I don't think it makes it slightly less expensive for you, unfortunately. Um, so other than that, they're exactly the same shape. Uh, they will function exactly the same. And you can get a pair of the sensor carts plus the sensor cart accessory kit and not buy any tracks. And that will save you some money when you upgrade. Um, we also, if you, we did also have someone who contacted us today saying that their classroom had been moved and whoever moved them misplaced five tracks. Do we sell the tracks separately? Oh man, I really feel bad for them. But yes, we do sell the tracks separately as well. Not the black ones, the, the non-colored ones, the, the aluminum colored ones. Aluminum colored because they're made of aluminum. You can buy those separately as well. Uh, we have another one there. How do I use the plunger card given that it doesn't have the encoder function? Aha! So let me pull out a plunger cart here. Uh, Pitch some things away and come back here. Here's my plunger cart. Um, so if you want to track where it is, then we do recommend the motion detector. You can get a motion encoder upgrade kit which is a do-it-yourself kit. And you just, you take the ends of these off, you put the encoder in, the encoder winds up being out this direction because this direction is the plunger. Uh, and then you put, we give you a new end to put on that has the, uh, where's the encoder? It has the encoder stuff in it. So that's an option. Um, or you can also attach it to an encoder cart uh, that doesn't really work for doing collisions with it, but if you've got the little Velcro tabs, I'm sorry, hook and pile tabs on one, and you can put, uh, I know I've got some more tabs here somewhere, hook and pile tabs on the other one. Let's see, it's going to need to be pile in order to fit there. Uh, I did not bring very many hook and pile tabs in here with me. Um, but then you can have them stick together and then they move together. And then you can use the encoder cart. But yeah, I this one comes with the encoder already in it and this one does not. So you can still use it. And it's also really fun because one of the things that people haven't asked about it is this thing uh, that's got a belly button. Um, and this, if you unscrew it, I did not bring a screwdriver. If you unscrew it, here I am with my fingernails trying to unscrew it. Ah, there we go. You can turn it from an innie to an outie. All right. And then as soon as it becomes an outie, 
pretty much this. Ah, I love that. That was my favorite. I'll do that again. That that little Audi, little little Audi belly button, that becomes a trigger to push the the, the plunger out. Uh, so you don't have to use this thing on the top. You can use this thing and do what we call a super elastic collision. Is momentum conserved? Is energy conserved? Ask your students. They will love it. All right, other questions? Do you have a kit of replacement parts? My students often lose things. We do, we do have a kit of replacement parts. Um, Jake, do you know the order code for the kit of replacement parts? Uh, uh, I was trying to think of that. Um, it probably has RPK in it, because RPK stands for replacement part kit, but there's more than one type of thing that has the RPK code. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that's the tabs. Oh, that's the tabs. So yeah, you can get, you can definitely get extra tabs. RPK, you're right. It's got RPK in it. Replacement parts kit. I remember that part. We used to do a name that order code contest around here, but we haven't done that in a few years. Uh, there we go. Dynamic system replacement parts kit. I'll post the uh, address in the chat here as well. Uh, but this is basically a kit that's got all the stuff that students, some students, not your students. I'm sure your students are great and wouldn't actually lose anything, but some students might lose these. So all of the all of the widgets, all the small parts that someone might uh, lose or walk away with or whatever in one kit there. It was always the smartest ones who were the worst. The, the, the smartest ones would always like find some way to break things that you would never have ever in your life considered. What the heck did you do? Ah. Oh, is it is it over? Do we only have half an hour, not 45 minutes? I kind of thought we had 45 minutes. Angie seems to be uh, saying that you can get more more help uh, from us if you uh, email us. We did have it for half an hour, but if people want to stay on, that's more than I just want to be mindful of people's time. Uh, but definitely you can continue to take questions. Are there any more questions? I could take another question if there's another question. If there aren't any more questions, then we can stop. Don't have any new ones in the chat. All right. And I never oh. got to show you guys the eddy current break, which is really cool. Oh, uh, go ahead and demo it, Fran. We've got time. Let's see what is an eddy current and why would I want to break with it? Are you breaking the current or are you breaking the cart? What are you breaking? I don't understand. <laughs> Thanks, Jake, for asking. I'm really glad you did. Um, so the eddy current break uh, is this cool little thing that lets you just put this right in the end of the cart, um, and then it's uh, sort of really close to the track. And then what you can do with this is, if you've got the, um, I've lost my little, what are they? Oh, here they are. Get more of them that have the, um, the Velcro on them. Oops, I mean hook and tile. Uh, you stick these with magnets in them, and now you've got some magnets that are moving close to a big sheet of metal. And then you can look at how that slows down the cart or changes in acceleration, which is really cool. 
because you're doing it with magnets and not with actually touching. So that's what the eddy current break is. Um, I'm not going to explain electromagnetic induction right now. I'm sorry, Jake. Um, and then the other thing I really wanted to say and almost forgot was all of these carts um, that we've been selling with the plastic ones, they don't roll off the table because they've got this great little uh, anti-roll peg on the bottom of them, uh, this thing. And if you don't have those, we have a ton and we will gladly send you some of these for free. Just tell us how many carts you have, uh, email us, call us, chat with us, whatever. So last thing I wanted to say. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Um, Brand, there's one that I missed. What? Uh, what's the best way to change the angle of the track when I accelerate a cart down it? Obviously, pile a bunch of physics books under the end of it. Um, that's, that's how I would do it. Uh, but if you want, I mean, we did actually make a thing. Uh, so we do have this thing. Uh, this thing that comes with it, um, it only, uh, you can't use it on one of those giant ring stands, but you can use it on a smaller ring stand and put that there. And then this end goes in the side of the track. Uh, and it gives you um, probably more, uh, it's, it, it, it's more adjustable than, than, a, uh, than a book, uh, it's less quantized than a book. Uh, more of a classical distribution of heights. Going there. <laughs> and like that. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Uh, do you have any tips for reducing the noise I get when I do motion detector experiments? <laughs> nope, sorry. <laughs> Jake, was that your question or did someone actually ask that? I have it written right here in front of me. <laughs> yes, because Jake, uh, that's not his favorite noise. <laughs> to put him on. I, I, oh, despite my age, I still have my high frequency hearing and I am one of the few people in the physics group who can hear the motion detectors ticking. So I am known as the one who's annoyed by noise. <laughs> I can hear the motion detectors ticking. It's just that after so many years of teaching, it doesn't bother me. You just ignored it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I had a good time. I hope you had a good time, too. And, Thanks uh, for coming, yeah, everyone. You'll get the recording. Have a good one. Enjoy school. Have a good school year, everybody.